Why did Hollister flop? In the mid-2000s, Hollister was one of the most popular clothing stores on the market. But over the past decade, their sales and market share have been steadily declining. But what happened? Let's take an in-depth look at the rise and fall of Hollister and what went wrong for the once beloved brand. The rise of Hollister, how it came to be. The Hollister brand was introduced by Abercrombie and Fitch in 2000 along with a made-up story that the business was established in 1922 by a world wanderer by the name of John Hollister. In the early 2000s, ANF and Hollister were both popular teen brands, but they steadily lost customers to fast fashion competitors and online retailers. Younger customers also began to mock ANF and Hollister's overly sexualized advertisements, huge logo designs, and cologne-filled stores. Hollister began as a clothing store when Abercrombie and Fitch acquired the name and began to capitalize on its California-inspired surfer-style aesthetic. Unfortunately, the brand didn't quite make the cut, and there has been a steady decline in popularity over the years. Many believe this could be attributed to the brand's inability to keep up with changes in consumer tastes and preferences or inadequate marketing strategies. In addition, their limited product line, lack of innovations, and unwillingness to embrace new trends also contributed to their downfall. As a result, Hollister has begun to transition to a more classic look and feel in an attempt to attract customers from other demographics. Over the next decade, Hollister continued to grow and expand, opening over 500 stores across the US and becoming one of the top teen fashion brands in America. But things started to take a turn in the early 2010s as customers began to shift their focus away from Hollister and towards other brands like Abercrombie & Fitch and American Eagle. This new competition put Hollister in a difficult spot, unable to keep up with the latest fashion trends or find the right balance of quality and affordability. As a result, the brand's popularity declined over time, leading to its eventual downfall. The brand saw its peak in 2013 when it launched its own fragrance line accompanied by a global advertising campaign featuring some of Hollywood's hottest celebrities. After that, they saw a downward spiral which ultimately led to its downfall. In hindsight, what seemed like an incredible decision at any time may have actually been more detrimental than beneficial for the brand. The marketing efforts did not live up to the expectation and resulted in a decrease in sales, making it one of the biggest contributing factors to its eventual demise. The fall of Hollister, what went wrong? The downfall of Hollister's brand was attributed to its failure to recognize the unique needs of its target market, the teenage demographic. Specifically, their efforts to replicate successful trends in other markets that were not age-appropriate as well as a lack of focus on cultivating relationships with their younger customer base meant that brand loyalty was slow and the brand failed to stay relevant. A lack of consistent brand messaging coupled with an increasingly competitive market led to a decrease in brand recognition and ultimately a drop in sales. The brand needed to invest in more targeted marketing which would have better resonated with its teenage market, as well as creating more meaningful relationships with customers in order to build brand loyalty and ensure brand longevity. In addition, the rise of fast fashion retailers such as H&M and Uniqlo contributed to Hollister's decline. These stores offered inexpensive versions of the same clothing styles that Hollister was selling, making them more attractive options for price-conscious teens. Another problem for the Hollister brand was its pricing structure. The brand was charging too much for their clothes, making them unaffordable for many teens. They also focused too much on the California beach vibe, which was something that many teens weren't interested in. As a result, teens began to look to other brands that offered more trendy and affordable clothes, leading to an overall decline in the brand's popularity. Is there a ray of hope that can lead to a complete turnaround? According to Piper's survey, Horowitz initiatives are luring in new teen customers. However, given that the American Eagle Outfitters, which usually outperforms Hollister in Piper's semi-annual surveys, also experienced negative comms growth at its namesake brand last quarter, it might not be enough to make a difference. ANF attributed Hollister's poor growth in the previous quarter to soft demand for girls' clothing, as weaker sales of tops were offset by greater sales of bottoms, swimwears, and Gilly Hicks merchandise. Additionally, Hollister's record increase in menswear was countered by this decline. Furthermore, Hollister failed to adapt and innovate with the changing trends in teen fashion. Brands like Brandy Melville capitalized on this aspect and quickly became the go-to store for trendier styles. As a result, Hollister was left behind and unable to compete with these newer brands. Besides the fact that Hollister failed to innovate with the changing trends in teen fashion, there was a clear miss in its business model. This ultimately led to the downfall of the brand as it did not have any competitive advantages over its rivals. Even though Hollister was still able to draw considerable sales, it could not generate enough revenue to sustain itself in the long run. What are your thoughts on Hollister? What led to its downfall? 
Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.